Hello and welcome to Clinical Liver Diseases video series. CLD is an official digital learning publication of the AASLD. I'm Dr. Jeremy Gillespie, and I'm currently a hospitalist trained in internal medicine at Northwestern Memorial Hospital and the author of You Are What You Eat, The Role of Macro and Micronutrients in MAFLD. The recent and ongoing transition from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD, to metabolic associated fatty liver disease, MAFLD, reflects our continued evolution in our understanding of the evolution of this disease. Given that the liver plays such an instrumental role in maintaining metabolic homeostasis, MAFLD truly is the hepatic manifestation of a metabolism that has systemically gone awry. Nutrition and diet often play critical roles in many gastrointestinal disorders. This becomes even more salient with MAFLD. Despite promising therapeutics on the horizon, treatment still rests on the emphasis of proper nutrition and weight loss in order to arrest and sometimes reverse progression of disease. It is important that we review the literature to keep abreast of the role in which macronutrients and micronutrients play in MAFLD. There are a couple of takeaway points from the article that I wanted to discuss. One, given that steatitosis is a prerequisite for considering a diagnosis of MAFLD, it is important to understand how overnutrition, which leads to energy surplus states, can result in perturbations in lipid metabolism that ultimately result in net effect of fat accumulation within hepatocytes. Simply put, lipid intake into hepatocytes often occurs through free fatty acid uptake from the bloodstream from dietary sources, endogenous production via de novo lipogenesis, or lipolysis of adipocytes peripherally. This is balanced on the other side of the equation with fatty acid oxidation within the mitochondria in hepatocytes and the packaging of free fatty acids into triglycerides, which are then exported out of the liver in the form of VLDL. When this storage becomes excessive, and ob obesity ensues, this leads to the triggering of insulin resistance and a gradual shift into a pro-inflammatory state. The metabolism of carbohydrates by the liver, namely simple sugars, exacerbates this storage and accumulation, namely by, mainly by activating the dopolipogenesis. Uh, additionally, the metabolism of carbohydrates is intimately facilitated by the actions of insulin, which as a hormone fosters an environment of anabolism. This leads to the deterring of fatty acid oxidation within the liver, causing buildup and ultimately the production of toxic metabolites that add to oxidative stress and the creation of free radicals. As you can imagine, apoptosis ensues and the attraction of inflammatory cells occurs, causing ongoing inflammation and which can lead to fibrosis. Oft sometimes this is self-limiting and this can regress, but it can also lead to a progression of disease. Figure one from the article attempts to remind the reader of the interactive role that the liver plays during the absorption process. We see that when macronutrients and micronutrients are broken down to their elementary parts and absorbed through the lumen of the intestines through either active or passive transport, they are often met with transport proteins or chylomicrons that are produced by the hepatobiliary system to be ultimately delivered to the liver for further processing. In the literature, it is quite evident that diets high in saturated fats and simple sugars have detrimental effects on the liver as well as the rest of the body, whereas dietary fiber most polyunsaturated fatty acids, monounsaturated fatty acids, and many micronutrients are believed to have protective effects in MAFLD. Micronutrients are often characterized as having antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, immunomodulatory, and antifibrotic properties in MAFLD. Many of the micronutrients studied in MAFLD are either stored or actively regulated by a healthy liver. While it is not yet clear, recurring and persistent liver injury is felt to disturb micronutrient homeostasis, resulting in some loss of protective effect. The second and last point I wanted to emphasize is that the quality over the quantity of a macro or micronutrient dietary content is as equally if not more important. This is best demonstrated in isochloric conditions. Traditional approaches have focused on implementing hypocaloric diets in order to 
obtain weight loss and thus affect MAFL progression. Isocaloric diets have been shown to affect MAFL progression and have been viewed as a more feasible as well as realistic alternative. The, this is best exemplified by the Mediterranean diet, which has been shown in several clinical trials to affect and reduce liver enzymes and hepatic fat content on various imaging modalities. On behalf of all of us from the CLD team, I hope you found this commentary on the role that macro and micronutrients play in MAFLD useful. For more information on the nutritional metabolism in MAFLD, please visit us at www.cldlearning.com. Thank you for watching.